Okay, pay attention. Sometimes staying healthy on vacation is hard. And do you want to know the truth? I don't always follow the list I'm about to give you. Matter of fact, sometimes I do the exact opposite. But that leads me to eat all the unhealthy foods, get very little sleep, run myself ragged, and feel miserable. Not to mention I'm also a registered nurse, so that's how I know these tips are tested and sometimes not tested. So I can help you stay healthy on your next vacation. Number one, stick to your normal routine. I put this as my number one tip because sticking to a normal routine ensures you sleep well and you don't disrupt your immune system by eating a ton of unhealthy foods you wouldn't normally eat in your everyday life. Honestly, when I travel, my routine is usually the first thing to go. I'm exhausted all day trying to push myself to see all the sights. I'm eating all the foods because I wanna try everything. But this doesn't give my body a lot of wiggle room to keep my immune system at peak performance. When you're on vacation, try to get up at the same time, eat about the same time every day, eat the same amounts of food every day, and then go to bed about the same time every day. You want to keep your body in this rhythm so that it knows what to expect and it knows how to handle the situation. If you end up getting out of that rhythm and then overloading your body with a bunch of extra food, especially if it's unhealthy food like we tend to eat, you end up putting your body through the ringer and it's focusing on dealing with all of those stressors versus just keeping you feeling energetic and healthy throughout the day. Bottom line, stick to your normal routine and the rest should fall into place. So that's where tip number two comes in. Pay attention to the food and drinks that you're eating while you're on vacation. Hey, look, I get it. When I'm on vacation, I not only give myself the grace, I give myself the permission to eat all of the foods that I don't normally eat at home and maybe some alcohol in there. Getting to eat these food and drinks outside my normal routine is my kind of guilty pleasure when I go on vacation. But this often ends up having my stomach hurting, my gut is full, I'm bloated, I probably haven't pooped. Yes, I said poop. I'm a nurse. Did I say that already? The word poop is not out of my vocabulary. I'm giving you permission to talk about your gut and say the word poop from now on. But the thing is, is that when I'm at home in my normal routine, I don't usually eat a lot of sugary, fatty food. But that means when we go on vacation, like when we went to Universal Studios Mardi Gras, I'm eating all these foods that I wouldn't normally eat. I'm eating the jambalaya. I'm eating all the beignets. I'm drinking all the, the alcohol and the hurricanes and that Goombe smash was really good. And if you're like me, I tend to overeat on vacation. Your body doesn't really need that much food to produce energy. So it's also overloaded trying to digest all the food that you've eaten. And I don't know if you know this, but most of your immune system resides in your digestive system. So when you overload it with all these extra tasks, it can't focus on just trying to keep you healthy. So like I mentioned back in step number one, try to stay on your same schedule and eat the same foods and drinks that you would normally eat at home. This will keep your digestive tract on schedule and happy. While I'm thinking of it, if you're finding this video informative or helpful or entertaining, please hit that like button. It really does help. And if you've made it this far, please consider subscribing and becoming part of our online travel family. The third tip I have is maybe incorporate a multivitamin or some vitamin C or zinc into your schedule when you're on vacation, just to give your immune system a little boost. Now, if you're eating a well-balanced meal, it's more than likely you're probably getting all of the nutrients and vitamins that you need from the foods that you're eating. In that case, it really wouldn't be very beneficial for you to take a multivitamin because your body already has the vitamins and nutrients that it needs, so it's probably just gonna get rid of it and create some very expensive urine. But like I say, if you are like me and you're not eating a well-balanced meal when you're on vacation, you're not eating good leafy greens and fresh fruits and vegetables and lean meats, and you are eating the jambalaya and the beignets and the Bloody Marys and the Goombay smashes, it's probably a good idea to help your immune system out just a little bit and either take a multivitamin or like I say, most of the time, I don't take a multivitamin. I just take some vitamin C or some zinc and boost my immune system that way. Keep in mind, I'm not a doctor. I want you to discuss your healthcare and any changes you're thinking about making to your medications, either adding or taking away, whatever you're doing, even if it's vitamins over the counter, you need to go talk to your healthcare provider before making any changes. For those of you in the back, let me read my disclaimer to you. This video is not medical advice and is not meant to substitute for your plan of care between you and your doctors. 
Do you have ways that you stay healthy while traveling? Come join the conversation and leave your comment below. Okay, we can go on to tip number four, and that is researching restaurant safety. Look, I'm sorry to keep talking about your gut, but maybe it'll help hit home just how important a happy digestive system can be when you're on vacation. The last thing you wanna do is get a bout of food poisoning and feel like you've been beat up in a bar fight. Try to do your research before eating at a new place or new restaurant or a food truck, whatever. There are plenty of outlets online where people cannot wait to tell you about their bad experience somewhere. Get online and do some research before you go out to these restaurants it doesn't mean that you won't get sick and it doesn't mean that the restaurant that you're gonna go to isn't gonna have some health issues. <laughs> mm. But at least you've done your due diligence to try to find a place that gets a good health safety rating and gets good reviews from consumers. Clear as mud, great. It's a big hair day, y'all. I know this next tip is going to come at no surprise to you, but tip number five, get your sleep. This goes back to your immune system again, kids. It also goes to your digestive system. They're one, they love each other, symbiotic relationship. The thing is your body needs time to regenerate. It needs time to repair. It needs time to build up energy so that you can get back to your day the next day. And if you're like me, because I'm absolutely a thousand percent guilty of this, I'll end up staying up, out and staying up longer when I go on vacations because I just, I don't have a lot of time there and I wanna do everything and I wanna see everything and I wanna run myself ragged so that I can check off these boxes of things that I want to do. That leaves me so exhausted. And it's also decreasing my immune system, making me more vulnerable to catching something while I'm there. I have a blog post about this whole same topic and I'm going to link it in the description below. And also, she's going to talk about the gut again. <laughs> this is the time when the neuro system kicks in to rest and digest. So see, if you're resting and you're getting good quality sleep, your body is digesting all of this food that you have stuffed in it all day long. You may not know this, but a lot of times that's why when you wake up in the morning and you have your cup of coffee, it's why you go to the bathroom and poop in the morning. Because your body's been busy digesting your food all night. Coffee. Okay. Hey, listen, just take it from me. Whenever you're scheduling all the things that you want to do when you take this trip, also be sure to schedule in the time that you're going to rest, okay? If you watch my Amazon favorites video, then this next tip will come as no surprise to you, and that is to wear your sunscreen. Look, this one is easy, so I'll be quick. Whether you're going to a tropical beach or you're going to a cloudy, historic city destination, you need to make sure that you're putting on your sunscreen. Two reasons. One, you're decreasing your immune system when you're getting a big fat sunburn. Your body is so focused on repairing the sunburn that you feel tired and achy, and it ruins the whole rest of your trip. Sun damage is so much easier to prevent a lot of times than it is to treat. Do your future self a favor and just wear your sunscreen. Okay, tip number seven, be up to date on your vaccinations. If you're traveling domestically, this probably isn't going to apply to you because you've most likely already had all of your vaccinations as a kid that are gonna be necessary for you to travel your country. But if you're traveling abroad, it's always a good idea in the planning stages to look up the government websites for the country you're gonna be going to and make sure that they don't have either any required vaccinations or highly recommended vaccinations. The reason why I say to look into these early is because once you figure out if you're gonna be required or, or highly recommended to have these vaccinations, you wanna get with your primary care physician ahead of time because some of these vaccinations aren't one shot. Some of them are a series of shots and you need enough time to be able to get them all done before you go on your trip. Tips eight and nine kinda of go together, but let's break them down. Number eight, avoid alcohol. Hi, I'm Stacy, and I'm a sucker for a good rosé. Jeff and I don't really drink when we're at home, but when I'm on vacation, sometimes I just feel like I'm out of my normal elements. Maybe I wanna treat myself, but I do try to not drink a lot when we're traveling because I know it kind of makes my body focus on processing the alcohol versus keeping me healthy. This is because your body sees alcohol technically as a toxin. So it's trying to get rid of the alcohol as quickly as possible. That doesn't really leave a lot of room for your body to focus on other things. It's just trying to focus on getting this toxin out of there. And typically this is gonna be going on for about 24 to 48 hours after consumption, depending on how much you drink. It's also very dehydrating because alcohol disrupts your um, hormones. And so it makes you tinkle a lot more, as you've probably noticed, when you've been drinking. So that brings me to number nine, and obviously that's staying 
hydrated. Now when I'm at home, I'm guzzling water all day long, it's no problem. But when I'm out on a trip, I'm usually running around seeing the sights and I forget to stop and hydrate myself. Right now as of filming, the general recommendation is that you drink half your body weight in water. So for me, I weigh 130 now, so half that, that's what I would drink in ounces of water a day. Again, like I said, I'm not a doctor. This is not to substitute you and your doctor's plan of care for you. It's just a general recommendation. Staying hydrated is a good thing. My last tip, tip number 10, wash your hands. Again, I know you've heard this, especially in the last two years of all of our lives, but washing your hands is the number one way to try to prevent you getting an infection while you've been traveling. Yes, you can use hand sanitizers, but the general rule of thumb is if you have the option, always use soap and warm water to wash your hands, and then you use the hand sanitizer as an option whenever washing your hands for real isn't there, like when you're on the airplane or something. Touch contact is probably the easiest way for you to either pick up or drop off your own germs. So what I like to do if I can when I'm traveling is I'm always washing my hands. I use the hand sanitizer when washing my hands at a sink isn't an option. And then I have a pretty big collection of very emollient hand creams to keep my hands nice and moisturized. Along with food safety, I've got a couple of bonus tips I'm gonna add in here. One, I know some travelers who travel full time and they stick to a vegetarian or even vegan diet when they go abroad. The reason for this is cutting down on things that are more likely to spoil like meats and dairy products, then you can probably reduce the likelihood that you're gonna get food poisoning. That second bonus tip in here, try to eat the foods that are native to the locale that you're staying in. When Jeff and I went to the Maldives, we tried to stick to foods that were kind of native to the region. So we were eating seafood, fruits and vegetables, that are more likely coming from the local ports than coming from some far off port having to be shipped on a boat for a really long time. Things like beef. They're not raising cows for beef consumption out on an island in the middle of the Indian Ocean. So more likely the beef came from the continent and had to be shipped way out here in the ocean. <laughs> I didn't see anybody get sick from it, that's not what I'm saying, but the point is when you go to a destination, try to eat the food that's native to the location. One, this will help you kind of acclimate to the culture, and two, it'll hopefully reduce the likelihood that you're eating some spoiled foods. Speaking of our honeymoon to the Maldives, we had such a good time on that vacation, and if you wanna know what it's like to vacation in the Maldives, watch this video next.